Ready? Okay. Everybody ready? Okay, everybody, welcome back. Thank you. Um, that was a nice way to start the year, first workshop meeting of the year. Always good to say thank you to our volunteers and our staff and everything. Um, now we, we're going to juggle the agenda a little bit. We're going to do our uh, administrative reports, D3 through 8. Uh, there's no 9. Uh, and then we're going to let them go. Um, they've got a busy week and no reason to keep you all night. So. Got it? So we will start with Brent. Great. So I wanted to share, uh, I'm sure many of you are aware there's a lot of positive buzz around our new, what will be our new maker space, uh, K8 Learning Lab, uh, on the second floor of the main building. I just wanted to certainly publicly acknowledge uh, a huge thanks for the support from the foundation that's made it possible uh, to move forward with this space. We had originally hoped to have a functional space come the start of the school year. Uh, I've since learned that when you order furniture, it takes 14 weeks for delivery. Uh, so we're looking at an opening, and we're looking forward to kind of a grand opening ceremony where, where, we, uh, where we will invite a number of people in to uh, celebrate the opening of this space, but the idea really being to really think about uh, how we design our classrooms and how do we further encourage collaboration and creativity uh, and further opportunities for more authentic project-based learning experiences for our students. Uh, and it's really just been so rewarding because we've had so many individuals who have been willing to donate their time and their expertise. You know, you. The wonderful thing about Cold Spring is you pick up the phone and, and you reach out to someone and the next thing you know there's 10 other people who are willing to step forward uh, and offer that time. Uh, and I reached out to Pam Gunther this summer because I had known that she had done the stenciling work on our playground uh, and she's really taken the lead with the design along with Chrissy Bernstein, uh, Sue Spratt's daughter Mary Spratt has been working on the design as well, uh, Megan Spratt, thank you. Uh, and we've had just so many individuals who have uh, been willing to offer their time and their knowledge and their expertise. Uh, I also want to publicly thank Skanga Woodworking, who has designed a beautiful table for the center of the piece, for the center of the space uh, that we'll have, uh, so that students can be working on various types of resources, from Lego robotics to uh, another resource that I'm really excited about called Little Bits. So we're looking forward to that opening sometime uh, towards the end of the month, early October. Thank you. Brent gets the fun stuff. Um, I'm just going to quickly report out on two things. One, um, the state assessment scores, the parents' reports, we have received those. Um, we will be labeling them tomorrow, and they will be going out. Um, I'd like to publicly just let parents know that the forms that you'll get back do look a little different this year. Um, there is still the bar with a scale score for your student score on the state assessments. They also put a percentile, your overall state percentile rank for your child on the right-hand side. Uh, also on the back, they have broken down the test into a little bit more detail in terms of how the child did on ELA in regards to reading and also then in writing. So you'll see a breakdown of two separate scores. Again, one a reading score and one a writing score. And then in math, they break it down into three different standards depending on what grade level the child is at. So the forms do look a little bit different. Um, as in the past, if you have any questions, please feel free to call either your child's teacher, uh, Mr. Harrington, or myself, and we'd be more than happy to try to help explain some of it. Um, the other thing I'd like to just report about is um, as you know, at the end of last year, we were talking a little bit about the grant that we received through New York State and the Reward School. Um, we're getting a little bit more information in terms of what we are going to do. We have not gotten a school district that we will be paired up with yet. Um, we're still waiting on that. Um, but some of the resources that we were able to purchase um, to help support our students have come in. They came in today. So we're quite excited about that um, to help in some of our remedial assistance and remedial reading. Uh, work that we do. So just keeping you in loop on that. Thank you, Mrs. Thanks, Joy. 
Good evening again. Um, three items I want to touch upon. Um, as you know, it's a very exciting time in the high school in the fall. Um, there's a great vibe about the building and, and very positive spirits everywhere. But um, we have very early homecoming and spirit week starting next week. So the enthusiasm is already building around that. You can see them getting very excited. Um, and then uh, this Friday, we're kind of kicking off our series of class retreats with um, a senior um, outdoor education trip that we've done for several years now. But we've kind of changing it up a little bit this year and we're heading up to Beacon and we're gonna be kayaking out of the Beacon waterfront, that amazing facility that they have up there. And um, instead of alternating it with a hike this year, we're gonna alternate it with Frisbee golf. And they have a Frisbee golf course up there. So that reinforces a skill that they all learned uh, in PE. So we're excited about the change and the kids seem to be as well. Uh, so that's for this Friday. And then the last item, uh, I, I just really think it's important to acknowledge the hard work of all of our students in the uh, in our AP program here. Um, I think maybe at a later time we'll talk about an award that the school kind of achieves through our AP performance. The, the, the number of students achieving three or better relative to our entire school population. So basically, we're being acknowledged by AP for having a high rate of AP enrollment and a high rate of success with that enrollment. So, um, but, but these students um, excelled really uh, the most of all of our students. And I've watched this list kind of grow in the last three years. It's about the third year we've been reporting on it, and it's kind of doubled each year. And this year is no exception. So. Um, very quickly, we are on camera. I really want to read um, these students' names. Uh, AP scholars are students who um, achieved a three or better on three APs or more, so a three or better average. Honors, AP scholars with honors is a 3.25 average or better. AP scholars with distinction is 3.5 average or better. And national AP scholar is a four average or better. And as you know, you get a one through five is your score. So Marcus Zimmerman is an AP scholar. Trevor Van Brunt's an AP scholar. Vanessa Uribe is an AP scholar. John Schwartzwelder, Zoe Proven, Emmanuel Palacucha, Lana Ness, Trevor Mastrantone Master are all AP scholars. AP Scholars with Honors, Clayton Smith, Shauna Ricketts, Bridget O'Malley, Wiley McDonald, John McCann, uh, and Alec Lane. AP Scholars with Distinction, it's the 3.5 or better, Carolyn Schweikart, Nicole Padala, Julia Olson, John Hughes, Cameron Henderson, David Hamill, uh, Matthew Drotar, Luke Cleary, and Mary Callahan. And we had three students that are National AP Scholars, um, which is a four- Point oh average or better, Michelle McEwen, Noah Campbell, and Kieran Austin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mrs. Wilson? So um, I want to talk a little tonight with my chief information officer hat on. We work really hard all summer as an administrative team and with other people in the district to really get ready for the start of school and, and get ready for that first day. And we were successfully able to roll over all of our eight database systems this summer um, and complete um, the consolidated, app consolidated application and two other grant applications that are required. And um, I want to specifically thank the administrative team for all of their help with Power School, which is a real big project and um, just say that it was really exciting to be here for when the kids arrived and that we were ready for them. Thank you. Uh, I just want to report on, Brian touched on the homecoming festivities. There's a list of activities that are taking place that week. We have many home games taking place. That's in the agenda. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that over the summer, uh, I took, it was, um, we had a sportsmanship, Section 1 had a sportsmanship meeting down in Byram Hills High School where all the Section 1 schools came together and talked about sportsmanship. We basically focused on soccer and the uh, issues with soccer and sportsmanship because the section is uh, having some difficulties with yellow cards and conduct on the, on the field. So. We came together, I'm part of the sportsmanship committee for section one, we came together to talk about how can we bring the students and coaches together to attack this problem. So we brought down uh, our soccer captains for the boys and girls teams along with the coaches 
And uh, I was down there as well. A few athletic directors were down there. And what was nice about it is we brought the kids together that had them kind of take ownership. What are you going to do different? What can we do different to make make the game better? You know, how can how can we improve your sportsmanship? So I, f- I thought it was great for our kids to see what else goes on in other districts. So it was kind of it was a really good experience, and we're hoping to take that to another level for all sports. But we just started with soccer, so I thought that was a nice thing over the summer. Thanks. Well, everybody knows what kind of summer we had around here. We had some bad news in the beginning with the district office and the modulars. But you know something? It was one of, the, one of the greatest things I've seen because what it did, it brought my whole team together. Everybody worked so well together. It was amazing. I think we, I sat down and I added it up one day. We lost about two months of manpower. Through all that, with all that extra work we had, and I also forgot to tell you, we didn't have a head cleaner because he was out for surgery. So through all that, Gary Veneselt came in, and he was the head cleaner and organized all the cleaning end of it. So I was able to concentrate on some of the other stuff. My maintenance crew, Mike Lizacatis especially, and Jeff Palace came in and built new classrooms and a new uh, computer lab. And it was just a, a real nice thing for me to see, to see the team finally come together as a team. And it really made me feel good. So in spite of all the negative things that happened, it ended up being one big positive. So I'd like to thank my whole staff, uh, all the maintenance men and all the cleaners. They were great. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> yeah, uh, questions from the board for anybody of the administrators, and then we'll get public. Actually, I just wanted to follow up and, and publicly thank Mike and his staff for all their great work over the summer. Uh, of, Ten days ago, uh, prior to our board retreat, we took a campus visit. Uh, Mike led us around the campus, showed us all the work that they'd been uh, doing this uh, summer, and it's really spectacular. The school looks in great shape. Obviously, everybody in the team has really been working extremely hard. <coughs> Anything else from the board? And just thank you to all you guys. I mean, the buzz that I've heard just from the opening of school, and I think there's been a tone that's been set. And I think it's just positive. And I think people, students, staff, teachers, community are all looking forward to this school year. And I think it's gonna be a great year. And I know Dr. Bowers has got a lot of things that she wants to accomplish and we're gonna do whatever we can to make that happen. But there's a great buzz going on and I think it's for all the right reasons too. And it's all based on teaching and learning and working together as a team. And I think you guys are really kind of set in the pace in the buildings and stuff. And I just wanted to thank you before we send you off. <laughs> so thank you again. Uh, just before you go, any questions from the public for the administrators before we send them to bed? No? Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, I know we have curriculum nights this week and everything else that's going on. Drive safely. <laughs> Careful, the camera's rolling, Mike. <laughs>kind of done, and I'm just going to kind of go through this quickly, and then I'm going to have the board pipe in and comment um, as kind of a follow-up. Um, every year, the Board of Education is supposed to establish goals for the year. They generally align, or they should align, with the strategic plan, and they obviously align with the superintendent's goals, and all of that comes together into a plan for the school district. Um, with all the things that have happened, I guess, in the last year, you know, we've kind of gotten a little off track a little bit, but that's to be expected. Uh, our strategic plan uh, was last done in 2008. It was a five-year plan. Um, Dr. Valanti, I know, didn't think it was worthwhile to start a new strategic plan when he knew he was leaving and he would hand this plan to a new superintendent. That doesn't make a lot of organizational sense. So we kind of went a year and a half or so without a plan, but we've been using the existing strategic plan. Um, One of the big initiatives that 
you know, Dr. Bowers was hired on was to create and come up with a new strategic plan. So as part of our board mini retreat on August 12th and our retreat on September 6th, I believe it was, as well as compilation of our meetings that we've had this year to date, uh, we kind of established uh, some short goals um, that will align with those initiatives. And I'm just going to go through them quickly and then I'm going to ask the board to kind of com comment on them. Um, what we could have done and what we probably have done in years past, and I know I'm a culprit of this, is we come out with these long goals of very wordy things that sound good and they sound smart. Uh, Jen was nice enough to kind of say, let's make this short and concise so it's easy to follow for everybody, and it says the exact same thing. That's why Jen's the vice president. Um, thank you for that. So what we've done is we've kind of streamlined our board goals. Goal one, support the transition of our new superintendent. That sounds simple and like a given, um, but basically it's probably going to be one of our most important functions. If we can a function effic efficiently as a high performance governance team, be prepared for meetings, be prepared prior to meetings, engaged and understand our roles and stay out of the weeds is what it's called meaning we don't run the day-to-day -day operations of the district, we set policy and goals. That's the job of the superintendent who we evaluate on. If we can stay focused in that, then basically the superintendent can do her job and execute it properly. And if all that works, that's what's supposed to happen. So that's really what goal number one is. Easier said than done. Uh, in a small community, it's very simple to kind of get distracted with that. Uh, but I think that's something that we're really going to try to stay focused on. So in other words, when little Tommy misses his bus and somebody screams and yells and calls me on my cell phone as I'm driving down the highway, you know, obviously we handle that phone call and we direct them to the right place, but we're not managing bus routes. And when we stay out of that, that's when school boards function properly. When we get into that, that's when there's a breakdown in the system and then she can't do her job which in turn means the administration can't do their job and then the staff can't do what they're supposed to do. So that's really goal number one. Goal number two is the adopting of a strategic plan prior to June 30th. And these are in the um, agenda packets. Um, I think the strategic plan, as I've seen some of the outlines to date, is probably going to be the most exciting thing that I've seen in this district in the 14 years that I've been involved. It is going to be a great process of teaching and learning, but also a community process. Um, the way it's going to be configured, and Dr. Bowers will get into that you know, throughout this fall, um, you're gonna see a community-wide staff-injected process of committees and work where really goal number two could be our only goal if we do it right. And we're going to try to get this all done by the end of June so we can leave this school year saying this is what we accomplished. We can hang our hat on it. Uh, we can break for the summer and then everyone can start working on executing the plan for next year. So this one's going to be a big one, but I think this is going to be probably one of the coolest things that we do. And I think the community is just going to put their arms around it. I know the staff is excited. I spoke to Leah Horn the other day, who's the president of the faculty association. She was very excited. And I think the district's ready for something like this. And Dr. Bauer's vision, um, it really is phenomenal. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Three, we call it rebranding Haldane, incorporating school and community-wide communication strategies. This is basically what we don't do well, and I will admit it, we don't tell our story very well. There's a lot of great things that happen here inside the building, outside the building, within the community, when our kids go to other places. And we do little dribs and drabs of good things, and we do board reports, and we do press releases, but it's not part of a whole plan. And I think that's something that we really need to take a look at, pre-K all the way to post-12 because there's a lot of great stuff that's going on here in classrooms. There's a lot of staff people doing some amazing stuff. And I think we really need to just take this and put these stories together and put it into something that everybody can put their arms around. And I think once you see it in a whole, it's gonna be phenomenal. And also from a budget standpoint, we're not 